What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'll be a slightly different one than usual, so um, in where I'm at the weather's actually been kind of warm so I thought I would record this episode outside in the park, get a little bit of the sounds of nature and stuff like that. So um, that doesn't really change the content of the episode much but thought I would explain the change of scenery a little bit. So. With that being said, uh, this week's episode is going to be kind of a catch-up episode for all the stuff that I've been watching. So with that being said, I'm going to jump right into it. So we had the finale for The Walking Dead Dead City. So although I think, or from my understanding, it was supposed to maybe be season one. I'm hoping I'm not confusing that with Secret Invasion, but they basically set up the season or the show to have a second season where... Um, we finally have Maggie reuniting with her son, um, exchanging for um, Negan for Herschel. But we get a nice or interesting little tidbit at the end of the show where um, Negan meets up with the guy, with the lady who's actually the superior to the Croat. So he's actually just, I guess, a general or um, admiral or something like that in her army. And they actually wanted Negan back to be able to have the scope of what they wanted to do to reunite all the communities, whether it was just in that region or all across the country. But um, we have that duality with the pictures that Herschel was drawing while he was in captivity. So um, I'm curious to see if uh, Maggie is going to go back to rescue Negan, find out who this lady is, who kind of reminded me of that android or from the picture reminded me of that android from Dragon Ball Z. Um, I want to say maybe I want to say 7 or 11 or some not um, uh, what's her name from Stranger Things but that's all besides the point. Um, so it sounds like they're setting up a second season where they're going to re they're going to have maybe Maggie reunite with Negan to save him find out what's going on, maybe join the cause, or one of those things where all of the Walking Dead shows that we're getting right now are aiming to be set up to reunite the country and the world after the zombie apocalypse. So we, um, as of this recording, we got a teaser trailer for the Rick and Michonne movie that's supposed to be come out. Um, I already forgot what the title is going to be called, but it's um, one of those lines that they said during the Walking Dead show, we got a trailer for the Daryl Dixon spin-off show where he heads to France. So um, it sounds like they're setting up the Walking Dead universe to um, rebuild the country and the world after the zombie apocalypse, reunite all these different uh, factions and societies and society as a whole. So we'll see how it goes from there. Um, it does seem like the long play. So one of those things where um, People weren't sure what they were doing with The Walking Dead. Um, it actually kind of puts um, the New Worlds, that two season show that they did um, for the, what we thought it was, not the Commonwealth, but the, and I'm already forgetting, the new, the new Commonwealth or New Republic or whatever that two season Walking Dead show was called. It's kind of now in retrospect putting a lot of that stuff into focus where Yes, it's about the zombie apocalypse, but it's going to be more about what do people do after. So it's actually getting to, getting to be really, really interesting as far as all this stuff is concerned. So um, I can't wait for the Rick and Michelle movie, which I think was 2024. Uh, I didn't catch the date on the Daryl Dixon one, so we'll see how all that plays out. Um, I think Fear the Walking Dead is coming later this year, 2023, so we'll see. Um, what how they round that out and what that's all going to be all about so um, as far as padre and how that ties in actually did they i think they resolved the padre stuff but basically how they round that out especially since i guess lenny james is no longer going to be on the show supposedly so 
Um, with that being said, I also had a chance to uh, finish Jack Ryan season four. So if you're a fan of Jack Ryan, um, whether it's the novels, the TV show, the movies, or anything like that, I definitely recommend giving the show a watch. Um, granted, it probably was not as strong as the first couple of seasons, but this season continues to deal with the fallout that Jack Ryan is was becomes a director in the CIA. The African American lady becomes the new head of the CIA, and it deals with her confirmation hearings. Um, Jack Ryan, in his usual um, analyst role or analyst uh, mindset, um, realizes that the, realizes that there's these bombs that are supposed to be set off um, to destroy society. So um, he follows all those leads. They reunite the team, and um, essentially he retires from the role just because he or retires from the CIA because he's done with all of this stuff. He's done putting his life on the line, I guess, but because there's a good team now at the CIA with um, Greer, the uh, lady who becomes the director of CIA, who becomes confirmed, um, and all the other people, so that all actually works out nicely. Um, I did like the ending um, of the show where um, he essentially calls out the senator for being a puppet to the whole plan that um, gets uncovered throughout the season, both just because uh, I, I, I'm going to paraphrase the way he said it, but it's essentially, it's essentially along the lines of either he knew the plan and was complicit, or he was um, he didn't know about the plan and he was just a puppet and ignorant or something like that and just stupid. So. Um, in general, it's definitely a, worth, a season worth watching. It's along the lines of the seasons two and three, so granted not as good as maybe the first one, but still very well done in a good season. And I think that's all they're doing for that show, so I don't expect any more seasons, so it's kind of also a pseudo send-off for that. Um, so with that being said, I did have a ca uh, chance to catch up on the last couple of episodes of Marvel's Secret Invasion, so we're essentially setting up for, I guess, the... Uh, presentation of, or the out, actual out and out invasion of the scrolls. So I'm kind of curious. So we'll, I guess we're going to see what um, happens with uh, Fury and um, the revelation that he's actually a scroll. So, or not really the revelation that he's a scroll, but there's a scroll posing as Fury. So um, is he still? Is Fury still on that um, space base called Saber, or what actually happened to him? Did he come back from the blip um, and all of that? Um, how will the scrolls invade? Will they be stopped or anything like that? So I'm still on the fence as far as the whole show is concerned. It's okay. It's, really, it's kind of on the little, for me, it's a little bit more on the dry side. So not necessarily a bad thing, but, um, yeah, it's been, so it's just, it was kind of hard to get, it's kind of hard to get behind until we see how they round out the show. So, um, we have the season finale and I think, um, Secret Invasion is a, limited series so the season finale is coming up so we'll see how they round it out um on a related note we did get the trailer for the marvels movie so um if you haven't seen it yet think of it kind of like um the latest spider-man live action film where we had all three spider-men where in this case we're going to have all three marvels so uh more world or universe building as far as the multiverse is concerned so we'll see how um, that plays out and how that movie goes, but that's kind of the basic gist I got for that. And so to round out this particular episode, I have been w continuing to watch Game of Thrones, so I got through seasons 5 and 6. So Arya's trained to be the faceless man, or faceless person, lady, whatever. We had the rise and fall of uh, Ramsay Bolton, so his marriage to Sansa and all of that stuff. <laughs> um, the Battle of the Bastards, the Battle at Winterfell, um, the, his death and all that. Um, Tyrion uh, and Jorah joining the fighting pits and ultimately going, getting back into Daenerys' graces. Um, the revelation that Jorah has um, grayscale, so um, Daenerys sending him off to find a cure. So um, essentially, while... Um, I didn't, I still didn't like how Tyrion phrased it as far as, um, can you believe that this is actually happening and you're in the great game now? Um, I did like the kind of impact because we're now in the end game of the show. So, 
um, all the different worlds or all the different storylines are now coming together, coming to a head. And we're going to see the final results of all the stories that have been happening with the White Walkers, uh, Westeros, the different kingdoms, uh, Cersei's ultimate uh, rise and all that. So um, overall, now that we're going heading into the final two seasons, it's um, a night, it's going to be a interesting story. Or still, or I mean, it was an interesting story for me to begin with, but um, the one thing that does come to mind immediately is when um, uh, Varys shows up at, I think it's in Dorne when um, the ladies are talking about what they're going to do and he shows up and I think that whole thing about how he gets from there to uh, back to um, Daenerys so quickly, I, was, I got to thinking that because Daenerys is heading to Dragonstone, he's actually just having to go from Dorn to Dragonstone rather than all the way back across the Narrow Sea to Marine or any of those other free, um, cities. So um, it's one of those things where to me it was not a problem because a lot of the show does involve fast travel. So um, it's for me, I still don't have a problem with it, but we'll see how it goes as far as the rest of the show. And now that we do have a lot fewer stories to worry about, they resolve, you know, things like. Um, now that Sam Tarley's back is at um, the Citadel, and he's we've seen Horn Hill. Um, Bran is a three-eyed raven. Uh, he's met with the uh, Night King. Um, they, um, John and Sansa have retaken Winterfell. Cersei the Queen. So a lot of the existing storylines are now or existing storylines are now complete. So we're now, as I said, we're in the End Game, or as Tyrion says, we're in the Great Game now. So. Um, Basically, now that I'm done with Season 6, I'm heading directly into Season 7. Um, so that's all there is for that. Um, as, bit, as far as a bit of housekeeping, um, you may have noticed that I have not been posting very many um, gameplay videos for um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. So I guess early or last week, they um, Asper, the uh, publishing company who put the game on Google Play for Android, pushed out a couple of updates that break the game. So the game would either... Um, crash on launch or once a saved game is loaded it would crash. I at first I thought it was just, you know, maybe it was a bad update so I reinstalled the game, I cleared the cache and storage and all that. That didn't work. I tried with and without the Razor Kishi with the same results. So um, needless to say the game has weird bugs with this update. Um, partially suspecting it's related to the mods that were installed but I also tested the game with and without that. Same thing happens. It, um, it'll launch and then crash in-game or randomly just crash so um, I am working on another gameplay to go through so at the moment I'm working on or I'm thinking about playing Voxel Doom so the mod this particular mod for Doom at uh, makes the models 3D sprites instead of like the 2D to make it look like 3D so um, I think I've got this general setup there so I'm just working my way through you know, using the mod in GZ Doom uh, to get around the licensing thing. I think I've got the mod set up and working okay. So um, it's just a matter of configuration and setup and things like that. So once I get that done, um, I'll start playing that and take it from there. So once you see those videos start going up, um, I'll, I'll put them up on YouTube and also have the post on um, social media as far as the gameplay playlist and just the general announcement of that's what I'm playing. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, um, want to subscribe to the show, support the show, and all of that good stuff, you can find the links on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.